in five, four, three, uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the uh, PMBC meeting for February 28th, 2024. Um, we have the agenda up here. Uh, we'll call the meeting to order. Uh, the first order of business is, that's not the agenda, is it? No. Let me um, segue out of this thing somehow. It's going well. Uh, Mr. Chair, do you need some assistance as far as stopping your share? Top of the screen, there should be a stop share button. I got a resume share. So is uh, can you see the agenda? No, it's the meeting minutes. Yeah, it's a minute, Steve. <clears throat> So I've got the wrong. Hmm. How about this? Is that any better? Nothing. It's you. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to add a little bit here. Um, so the uh, we're going to open the meeting. We've got a warrant. Oh, that, that is the meeting minutes, isn't it? Can you see this? Is this the agenda? You're not sharing anything, Steve. Okay. Yes. Why don't we just read it off? How about that? Nope. Here we go. Okay, so um, we have a couple of warrants to uh, address. <laughs> so we can bring those up. Um, the first one is for Can you see that? Yeah, it's sideways though. That's the only thing. Yeah, this is um so this is for the senior center. Um it's for Commodore builders and um LB architects. Uh, for a total of $92,769.59. Um, I did send this out previously. I don't know that anyone had a chance to look at it, but any uh, any questions or comments? No, not. Uh, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Roll call vote, uh, Bob. Bob Romley, yes. Mike. Mike Scudero, yes. Uh, Bartlett. Come on, Bartlett. Bartlett there. I'm assuming he's going to be affirmative and Steve more affirmative. Uh, that's great. Uh, we'll look at the second warrant which is for 36 King Street. Can you see that? No, sir. Help. Ready. 
Bartlett's still muted. He is a co-host, so he may not be aware that he can unmute himself, sir. Mm -hmm. Oh, now I can unmute, yeah. <laughs> there you go. I, I still can't start my video. Oh, there I go. Okay. Okay, here's the um, warrant for the uh, 36 King Street uh, for um, LB Architects and uh, Vertex for a total of Doesn't have a total here. Thirty-four nine eighty-five, Steve. Yeah, at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Right, it's in the black. Oh, line. I got it. Yep. yep. Uh, any comments or uh, questions on that? Motion to approve the thirty-four thousand nine hundred eighty-five dollars. Thanks, Bob. Uh, roll call vote, uh, Mike. Mike Scaduto, yes. Second. Bartlett. Bartlett, yes. And Steve, yes. Thank you very much. <clears throat> That takes care of that. So we'll go back to the warrant or the uh, agenda. I'm not going to bother to share this because I'm having issues. But uh, what was that? minutes for one twenty four twenty four. So the um, I don't know why this isn't coming up, but the meeting minutes from uh, January 24th is amended. Sent those out. Um, any comments? Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, roll call vote, Bob. Bob Rami, yes. Uh, uh, Bartlett. Bartlett Harvey, yes. Mar uh, Nike. Mike Scaduto, yes. And Steve Moore, yes. All right. Let me see if I can get this agenda up here. There we go. So the next uh, item is the uh, Shaker Lane Feasibility Study. Steve, you want to talk, talk about that? Uh, I'm assuming um, you mean me. So, yes. Um, so... Uh, we had a designer bid opening uh, or designer proposal uh, due date today at two o'clock. Uh, we had uh, 11 uh, or 12 um, designers interested, came through the walkthrough. We received two uh, designer proposals today. So um, we're in the process of uh, following up with MSBA um on what the procedure is since we've had less than three proposals submitted um we're working with uh, uh mark from tth uh we had a meeting today ryan was in that meeting uh and jim was uh at part of that meeting as well so um we're working with That's them to finished. figure out what msba oh. recommends and then we're we're following up with the shaker lane building committee um Hopefully going to have a meeting on Tuesday night, discuss that with that committee and uh, what that committee's desire is and move forward with the two or um, re advertise it and try to generate some more interest in uh, submitting design firm proposals. Um, Mark Stafford is also going to follow up with some of the design firms that showed up for the walkthrough but did not show up and submit a proposal and find out some of those reasons and then um, use that information to help make that decision with the committee. Right. Any uh, questions for Steve? Okay. Next is uh, Littleton High School roof. Uh, Brian's not here, so I'm assuming that's completed. Steve, do you know anything about that? Yeah, there is a punch list uh, that um, uh, Socotech generated. Um, we're working with the roofers on uh, completing the items on that punch list, but it's pretty much completed on the other than those punch list items. I don't have a date for the punch list items, but um, they're working on those. Okay, great. Uh, moving down to the senior center, Brian. Thanks, Steve. Um, 
And then jumping back to the warrant articles, just so everyone on the on the uh, committee knows, we do prepare two invoice packets for each project that gets submitted to the accounting department and Steve. If anyone has any questions, we can distribute those to everyone. I don't know if it goes out to everyone, but it, inside of that uh, will be a detailed budget breakdown uh, as well as tracking on uh, committed costs, what's been spent, what's being recommended for each month. Uh, right. For the senior center, we're going to be including also a monthly report um, we can go in depth or as high level as we'd like at the PMBC meetings. I'm going to probably have, um, our, our site manager on, on these calls as well to, to, um, uh, present the monthly report as well as go through any of the upcoming activities. Um, we have mobilized to the site for the senior center. Um, the temporary fence is, is, uh, will be going up soon. If it hadn't already today, um, they've occupied the neighbor building. And uh, we had a meeting with staff last week, um, just preparing them for what they can expect and, and giving them some heads up about our about our construction schedule. Um, we've also been in touch with the the community and the residents that live on Shattuck Street. We'll be preparing kind of a communication bulletin on a weekly or biweekly um, a weekly or biweekly um, period, so that they can. Uh, know what to expect, uh, although we do not anticipate any heavy traffic in Shattuck Street. We, we have a, a good logistics plan with the, the parking that we have an agreement with the church down the street again for contractor parking. Um, so like I said, we've, we've cut down some trees. We're mobilizing. We're, we're going to be occupying the house. Uh, we've also had some discussions with the DPW director about saving the town some money about the, the fill. This is an export site, so we'll be hauling fill off site. Uh, if the DPW has some use for it, we'll be able to receive some some credit on a cubic yard basis uh, that we'll be able to recruit some some money back from the contractor on there. So that's good news with that. Um, there is one question I had for the committee, uh, and it is going to be how we are going to be handling change orders um, in in projects past that I've been uh, involved with with the PMEC and with Littleton. Uh, we could go a, a number of different ways. I could present change orders to the committee on a every two week basis uh, where we go into every every change order and uh, discuss the validity and whether or not we proceed with it um, after it's been vetted by myself and the design team. Uh, we could also uh, have a, a representative to the PMBC that I could that I could meet with on a regular basis to go over any type of contract changes that are coming through within a reason. Um, and then also, if there's anything substantial that needs to, we wait until a PMBC meeting. Um, or we could set a a, a, a threshold or a budget uh, for which we are working within our contingency. And us as the OPM and the designer, when fully vetted, we we have the authority to, to make some changes that are necessary, but anything that needs to be um, vetted by the PMBC, or if it's a, if it's a, we'll call it a, a want rather than a need we would bring on a on an as needed basis to the committee. So um, I wanted to bring that up for maybe discussion to see how we want to proceed with that. Um, I did bring the the first change order of the of the uh, project. There is a, a circuit breaker um, that needed a higher rating. The engineer was in agreement. We went back and forth with the contractor. Um, they lowered the price slightly. It's been recommended. I, I have it. It's for um, it's for five thousand two hundred and twelve dollars. This would be coming out of the uh, construction contingency that's in our overall budget that would be reflected in our invoice packet. Brian, can um, you hold a second? Yep. Upcar is that somebody that you've got coming in? U P K A R. No. I'm no. thinking that we may have a potential bomber there, but um, that's your discretion, kind sir. It's he's got a hand up. That's the only reason why I'm asking. Looks like they're already in. Yeah, but they'll they want to say something, I believe. Well, let's let, let's let Brian finish. Okay, Brian. No, oh, yeah, not with me. So, um, so, so I think Brian, I, I think it would be um, what I what I would prefer to see is um, that you put together a list of the potential change orders. With your recommendation and um, a brief uh, description of, you know, the need for the change, and send that out to the committee in advance of 
a PMBC meeting. And if we have any questions, we yep. could ask you. Yep. Yep. So what the, we you know, the, go ahead. I mean, I, you know, I'll ask the rest of the committee if they think that that's uh, a good idea. Bob. I, I just like to know what the change order is for. That's, you know, and sure. if, if Brian does that and sends it back to us, at least we'll have an explanation of it. So what yeah. you'll have in your monthly packet, in addition to bringing the change orders to the, to the meeting in the packet that we will send out with our monthly reports, we'll have a PCO log and it's color coded such that it's either under review by us. It's either approved and already a contract amendment to the contractor, or it's recommended to the committee. And we, and we actually give it a, um, a classification as well as to what the reasoning for the change order is, whether it was an ask from the owner, whether it was an omission from the designer, or whether it was uh, an unforeseen condition. Uh, and so at the end of the day, you can actually see the pie chart of kind of where the change orders have originated from throughout the project. That sounds good. Uh, Mike, yep. what's your thought? No, I think it makes sense to have it sent out so we can comment if needed. Yeah, Bartlett? Yeah, I I would like to see them. Uh, I think that's great sending them out before the meeting. I I um a little bit concerned if if that is going to delay anything. If there's something that needs to be decided right away, and that's I think that's a great great point, Bartlett. I think um I've got a little bit of a hold on or my hands on if something's very urgent and can't wait two weeks. That, that might be the scenario that we're talking about mm -hmm. here. I, I do plan on bringing everything to you guys with the PCO log that you guys can can vet out and approve. Um, if there is something that's urgent or something that's needed in order to keep construction schedule on pace, um, obviously, if it's something large, then it needs to wait anyway in order to be vetted by the PMBC. But, um, you know, I, I don't think what we're going to, we haven't hit that yet, but if right. that happens, um, Maybe I, I'd use you, Steve, to to either if you wanted to call a, an emergency meeting or you know to we can discuss on how we want to to handle. So it. I'd I'd like to propose that the um, PMBC representatives uh, Bob and uh, Bartlett um, have the discretion to um, approve anything below a certain amount. Let's just say um, fifteen or twenty thousand dollars. You know, if number one, it's urgent, or two, we don't have a quorum and it's going to be four weeks, and you know, mm -hmm. because we do have quorum issues. So, um, if the committee is okay with that, I'd like to uh, have someone make the motion. Steve, I'd go along with that, only insert with uh, Brian's recommendation. Yeah, yes. we, we, we would not approach the PNBC unless it's, um, it, most of these change orders have, have a little ping pong back and forth with the contractor, making sure that we're comfortable or the breakdown is sufficient, um, or if, if we think it's the, the overhead or the markup is is um, not per the contract. So, yeah, we'd be coming to you if anything that that we'd be recommending at that point. So, what's a good threshold? Twenty thousand, twenty five. Uh, twenty, I think, is is twenty is sufficient okay. for a project this size. Yep. Yeah. So, so Bob's made a recommendation or a, a motion. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, Bob? Bob Rama, yes. Uh, Mike? Mike Scaduto, yes. Uh, Bartlett? Bartlett Harvey, yes. Steve, yes. Motion passes. Good. Um, and so just in that vein, uh, we did have the first one. I, we have not generated the full PCO log yet. That will be with you guys for the next meeting. Um, the first one was a um, what we're considering a um, an omission on the size of the breaker. It's something that ultimately we would have had to pay for if it was in the design. Uh, if if you wouldn't mind, I can I can share my screen quickly. I know we we have other things to discuss. Um, I I don't I don't think we need to go through that. Okay, cool. Um, then the the only other item that I did have uh, for the committee. Uh, was something that I did bring up last week. Um, we had we asked LLB to uh, just put together some exterior renderings for the committee to take a look at uh, as they're going through some exterior uh, colors and finishes. Um, as those are being submitted, they're they're starting to put some 3D modeling together. So uh, I wanted to be able to bring this to the committee to show them um, some some 
this is the building structure and the, and the size of it, but uh, kind of what the theme of what they're going for right now as they start to narrow down their colors. So I wanted to bring that to everybody. Looks nice. So, so is that the color? Uh, that's, if uh, not to quote the architect, but he doesn't know if it's going to be off white, tan, ecru, or uh, he had a, he had a bunch of other names for for off white, but um, that's the type of theme he was looking for with with color of siding, trim, uh, and associated asphalt shingles. And what is what is the uh, what is what is the uh, exterior skin anyway? Is it hardy uh, board or what is it? Yes, it's a fiber cement yeah, fiber, fiber cement board, but it's a clapboard. Okay, hardy board. Uh, just to ask a question, uh, that sort of kidding aside on that, um, you know, there are some of those questions uh, that are being asked regarding, uh, you know, color finishes, et cetera. And, uh, and, and speaking to the design team, there were questions about how that process should work. So, um, uh, you know, Steve, I don't know, uh, Steve Moore, I don't know if there's any thoughts you had on that in terms of or, or how you've done it in the past so that um, you know they could get some guidance um, as to how to proceed with some of those uh, variables that are going to co coming to come up um, with this project. Well, the uh, on the library, the library trustees chose the color. Um, you know, for this project, I you know I I defer not to PMBC. We just implement. We don't make policy decisions, yeah. but. Uh, you know, maybe Liz and, you know, mem you know maybe she gets a, a group together that uh, has an interest in, you know, the building appearance. And that's what that's just what they're doing for the interior design and the palettes and finish schedules on this. I think as we we talked at the last meeting, although PMBC is not going to implement decision making or policy on colors, um, we did want to kind of give an update as this thing progresses and the designer starts making some narrowing down colors as sometimes submittals can be a, a range of 40 different colors and, and we don't need to be spending the time at this meeting going through um, different shades of white. Um, so yeah. uh, just providing right. providing updates and hoping to give more, you know, as as this gets closer to final final uh, selections. So I can't help but notice, and I, I know Mark's on the call, <laughs> A plethora of uh, solar panels on the roof. That's correct. That was um, we. That was the first alternate that was uh, actually the only alternate that was part of this bid package. Uh, when we presented the guaranteed maximum price to the select board, um, there was sufficient funding at the time to include the solar panel package in this project. So it is being included as part of this, and it is substantially larger than the library. And the um... The grant monies are factored into that? Uh, not at this time. Okay. How about the uh, battery backup or the generator hookup? Yep. And so that that was a, a conversation that we've been we've been exploring with the design team. Um, what we've kind of decided or understood at this point is a roll-up generator with a manual transfer switch is going to be extremely cumbersome. And at the nature of this all electric building, in order to back up the entire building, you would need a an extremely large generator to be to be trucked in in order to back this power up. So um, unless but you, but you you know you would only be backing it up for emergency lighting and power, not the entire building. So unfortunately, the building inside, because it had progressed and gone out to bid, by the time we started talking about battery backup, there are no emergency panels. There are no emergency backup panels inside the building. So this thing is an all electric building that is driven off of a, a single uh, distribution panel. Okay. So the the next step, what we've done in, in talking with both Ryan and, and with and with Mark um, about this is is bringing in some possible vendors discussing battery backup and what our options are with the design that we have right now. Um, I think that's our best bet than trying to go with our engineer of record um, to try to design something new for ad services that may not have the 
the appetite with the town, um, but rather bringing in a, a third party to take a look at and to see what we can do about possible battery backup in this building. So I'll defer to LLB, but I understand through conversations with the former chairman of the BBRS that uh, fire services is requiring sprinklers in the um, in the rooms with batteries, solar ballot, so, solar batteries. Anyway, that's that's another conversation. Sure, sure. <laughs> yeah. I think so Mark I and I had that conversation about a week ago. I, I would say any any vendor that we bring in or third party firm regarding any back, battery backup would go through all of the, the town channels before anything would be uh, implemented in something like this. Okay. All right, any other uh, comments, questions on the senior center? We'll move on to Indian Hill. I'll I'll kick off from where we are with uh with the Indian Hill property. Uh, I know there's been multiple meetings in the past week in regards to where we are and and uh, to to provide everybody an update. Um, we do have LLB here, Brian Valentine, Jessica White uh, from the design team. Um, on, on where we are as we as we started this scope of project right around the new year. Um, we are in a, a very fast paced, um, fast track um, design period in order to go out to bid. Our, our scope and our deliverable was to be able to uh, deliver a total project budget to the town meeting floor in May. Um, in taking the date of when town meeting is and working our way backwards, we understand when the warrant closes. So we know when a bid in hand needs to be in. And then we need to work backwards from Mass General Law procurement laws uh, for the procurement window for that. And so in order to get achieve those dates, um, we want to provide the schedule to the PMBC tonight and to get their blessing. We'd like to we need to advertise in the central register this week. Therefore, the documents can be ready for potential bidders next week. At that point, there is a window for addendum and updated drawings that can go out to potential bidders, um, any changes or or um, modifications that need to be done uh, in our schedule. Uh, I'll let LLB show the schedule on where we are right now. Um, but ultimately that that is our, our proposed schedule right now in order to achieve those dates. We wanna make sure that uh, PMBC is on board and we'd like them to give us a, a high level uh, page turn to, to go over the programmatic um, stuff that's happening with the building as well as um, the assessment of the building itself and how they prioritized exactly what's going into the scope here uh, to kind of um, bring some life back to this building and, and, and make it the best it can for the town um, at, the, uh, at the at the best prices that we, that we can that, that the town can afford so um, without, with that, I'll give it over to, to Brian and Jessica. They can go over our, our, our schedule and, and a little high level on the design and what our, what our uh, next steps are. Can everyone see my screen? Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, Brian, I don't know if you want to comment any more on the, on the schedule, mm -hmm. but, uh, we'd be happy to share this. Like, like Brian was saying, it's very tight and we're looking to post to the central register tomorrow. Um, and then at the advertisement in the next week to do the, the full set of drawings. Yeah, you can see it's relatively tight, but doable. And it gets um, it gets bids in hand uh, with everything going well uh, um, by uh, April, what is it? 4-3, uh, oh. nope, 4-3. So that would, that would give bids in hand 4-3. Um, and I believe there's a duration for uh, getting uh, this on the warrant. And um, hopefully that falls within the, uh, the delta of the four, three to five, seven. So Brian, does that leave any time for uh, addendums? Yes, so what you can see there, Steve, is um, what, no, that's okay. Um, what that gives us now is by advertising tomorrow, it puts us in the queue in the state so that it'll be live for potential bidders on um, March on 6th. next Wednesday. So I believe that's March 4th or, or March 5th. Uh, we, 6th, I'm sorry. We'll be using 
uh, Project Dog, which is an e-bidding software um, that's very convenient that that people can get the documents and get the addendum at that point. That's when it will be available to them. By what we have between March 6th and March 18th is pretty much the window that we have for people to ask questions and for us to provide answers right. via addendum. So right. on the as, 18th, it as, it as it relates to filed subbidding. Right, correct. So that is, that's the window we have in order to uh, make modifications, answer questions, while still maintaining the dates that we have right now. So if there aren't any other questions, we can um, go through the, go through the uh, improvements that we're proposing and we have a, um, we can do a page flip um, quickly. Uh, and if there are any questions, dive into those areas. Stay on this document real quick if you want to run through yeah. it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the proposed exterior improvements are um, to replace the damaged rotten soffits, trim, siding, uh, all new window sills, uh, all new paint, uh, building signage, uh, as well as site signage, um, and then a new uh, wood stair and deck um, off the back. Um, this does not uh, take into consideration the roof work. Um, that was so, also- so when you when you say uh, wood stairs to be replaced in kind, I assume it, that'll be like a, a um, one of those uh, synthetic uh, wood products. Yeah, so there is an existing um, exit out the back, um, out, out of one of the kitchens, um, and it is just in it's in bad shape. Um, and it's not it's not safe right now as an exit. Um, so we're looking to to build that back um, in place, um, either with uh, um, a composite product or um, like pressure treated wood. Yeah, my, my, my preference would be composite. Yeah. Thank you for the input. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we also had a consultant uh, visit the site to look at all the doors and the hardware um, because we noticed a few uh, a few things were missing as we were walking through. So they did a safety and code check for this. Um, so a few things that they noticed that uh, were not originally on the radar are um, some exterior doors that need to be uh, either fully replaced or panels replaced. Um, and there are some interior doors as well. Um, you'll see that on the plans when we get to that. Um, all new AV IT security, um, and that's being coordinated with Nancy and, and the town's vendor. Yeah, I can speak to that one. We did meet, we've yeah. met with Nancy Glencross a couple of times, as well as the school department's IT uh, director. Um, we're discussing the fiber that needs to go into the building as well as the uh, access control and security system that we'd be using um, uh, as a town building, we'd be using the, the, the town's proprietary system. Um, so she's talked with um, the town's vendor um, and, and there'll be coordination between that and the, and the existing hardware or the new hardware that's going into the building. We looked at any of the IT requirements as a new rack, switches, uh, and associated wiring that's going to need to go into these two two new locations. Brian, I know we're using the town's vendor, but are, are we circumventing a, a bid by doing this? So uh, like we had at the library, Bob, we um, put it out to bid. For the library, we put it out to bid, and the bidder who was uh, Neshoba Security um, was not on the state bid list. I worked with the attorney general's office who said that they would allow it since the backbone is used out of town hall and they could continue having that same vendor throughout with the same system. So um, those are the rules that I'm, that I'm going under right now. Okay. As long as we're not going to get burnt by doing something. Right. <clears throat> okay. Moving to um, the rest of the upgrades inside. Um, I listed it out by floor. Um, so 
uh, when you walk into the building, uh, we're going to have a new vestibule window. It's going to be replaced with an operable sliding transaction win window and counter um, so that uh, people can sign in uh, without going through into the space um, that will be uh, card access. Um, some of the vestibule is going to be taken out to um, add a storage closet in one of the adjacent conference rooms just to add more storage um, as that is a big need for the town. Um, we're replacing the counters in the reception area to be uh, furniture, and we're really relocating some of the, the millwork in that space to be utilized in other areas on the second floor. So can, can I interrupt for a minute? When you say um, storage is a big need for the town, what, mm -hmm. what, are, you, what, what are you storing? <laughs> what, what's going in the closets? Um, so, yep. the, so on the first floor mainly it's um parks and rec um which are uh you know they're 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 items that they use daily for activities with the kids um furniture yeah, they, yeah I get it. They, they got a lot of stuff yeah okay. yeah yeah and then the school department has a lot of filing so on the second floor there is a um, secure filing room um, but they also have uh, cabinets throughout filing cabinets throughout that they need to keep those records on hand, you know, for, for the past seven years. So there, there's a lot of, uh, storage areas, um, throughout the building that will be, will be taken over. They need to go, uh, digital. <laughs> Easier said than done. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> Um, so we're installing a few doors in the closets that uh, in, in one of the corridors by the Parks and Rec uh, offices um, because they were just opened up, uh, they were removed. Um, it, it would be nice to close that off. Um, we're dividing um, offices into multiple offices. Um, which will have to, uh, which affect the electrical, the, the lighting and whatnot in those two spaces. And then the room above will be made into a large conference space. Um, we we spoke about removing the gas stove in the existing kitchen. Um, and the, the Parks and Rec Department is requesting a new electric stove um, so that they can do um, pr a program, cooking classes programs with their with the kids. Um, that is not something that we currently have um, in in scope. We just have the removal of the existing gas stove at the moment. Um, the theater room will remain as a theater space, but the Parks and Rec Department uh, plan to use it daily. Um, so we're looking into some protective um, enhancements uh, for lighting because there is a lot of um, you know, there's the theater lighting and then the general lighting. Um, we want to make sure that 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 basketballs don't get thrown up into the balcony and uh, affect the uh, the workers up on that second floor during the day, during the office day. Um, Parks and Rec is going to have a projector installed above the stage for some games. Um, and then basically throughout uh Throughout the first floor, ceiling upgrades will be done as needed. There's some there's some water damage that happened, um, so those areas will be fixed as well as some areas that were uh, affecting the the wall construction. Um, we're also doing painting throughout and uh, minimal other uh, finishes. We're um, re re resealing and re um, sanding the floors um, and. That's basically it on the first floor, other than uh, furniture, they're bringing over as much as they can, but there is um, some need for some additional pieces. I think I'm just gonna pop over to the set so that I can bring up um, the plan in case anyone has any, any comments on this floor. Um, so this is the vestibule right here with that transaction window. You can see out in the back is the, the new stair and deck. Um, 
we have a new wall here dividing these two offices and we took this wall out here to make as a shared conference space. Uh, let me ask you a little off, <laughs> off the cuff question here. Is, mm -hmm. is there a um, room um, for um, newly newly minted mothers to um, you know take care of uh... a nursing a mother's room well, yes. room yeah yeah yes uh, so that was um, a talking point um, we didn't want to have it in the one of the bathrooms because no. of yeah. Um, so we were looking actually at the storage room right here. It's a very small room and it has a window, which would be honestly one of uh, uh, the best places in the building for that mother's room. Um, we just need to uh, make sure that there is enough storage throughout. Uh, I think the departments were worried that if we if we made this into a mother's room, they wouldn't they would be losing storage space. No, we have to put in a refrigerator, right? Um, there are no code requirements as of yet. Um, there are levels. Best, to best it. practice, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you can have a lounge chair in there, a counter, a sink, a, a refrigerator is always nice. Um, but like I said, it's not code required. So I'll, I'll leave that up to the uh, occupants, you know, but mm -hmm. I would think that that's something that you'd want to consider. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Any other questions on this floor? I would just say, Jessica, um, we sent out this link to these, to this bid package. Yeah. Just, just shortly ago. And even though we would be advertising or even ourselves put in the queue for the central register, there are other consultant drawings that are gonna be part of this bid package. And we wanna get that out to everybody, um, you know, as, as these documents go live. Mm -hmm. And if there's feedback during that window that we talked about, um, you know, mm -hmm. you can always direct it to me. I can get it to the designer at this point or the PMBC at that point. Yeah, yeah, so we, we don't just want to take up we don't want to take up all the time tonight. I don't know what else is on the agenda, Brian, for us. Um, right. but, and we only got through the first floor, but uh, if the PNBC wants us to continue, we can if you are comfortable with where we're at um, and answer any other questions that you have. Should I should I continue to the next floor or? Um, at least do you want to look at the, the plan? Yeah, um, maybe quickly go over the list um, over the uh, the second yeah. floor, just more, a little bit more brisk. And... Yeah, the, uh, this is pretty, this will go pretty fast. So the second floor, we're putting in a new kitchenette. Um, we're opening the copy room door to allow for a larger space in there. Um, we're replacing a side light. Uh, I'm, uh, we're adding one internal side light and replacing an existing skylight. Um, we're posing, uh, we're also proposing four solar tubes to bring in more natural light because we could not, um, we could not enlarge any of the, the existing exterior windows. Um, we're adding some doors, reloading, re relocating some doors, and then upgrading with paint and and possible new new furniture, but using existing as much as possible. So those solar tubes will be um, will they be able to be? I'm not quite sure how to put this, but you know we're probably not going to do the roof at the same time so if we're mm -hmm. putting in solar tubes mm -hmm. will they be able to be um constructed so that uh you know there's not a lot of uh work required to make them weather tight when we replace the roof they can be flashed into the current uh, roof uh pretty pretty uh straightforward um it's a uh, a newer Velux model that has a plate glass on it rather than the acrylic domes that you're typically used to seeing. So it's a much yeah. lower profile from the outside of the building. And that flat plate glass rests on another shroud of, of aluminum that gets flashed into the roof. 
And so we do have a roof replacement as a part of this project. It is going to be one of the uh, one of the first alternates that we suggest the town go forward with as this goes out to bid uh, in case bids aren't favorable um, on bid day, um, then then that's an alternate that can be uh, chosen to uh, to help uh, influence that that bid. Would it be uh, one of the well. first or one of the last alternates? Well, uh, there we were going through it earlier today. There's really not a lot of other alternates that we can really uh, go after that are big ticket items. There are a few small items that we probably put forth to you guys, um, but um, that's 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 one that's probably going to sway, you know, the needle a little bit as far as a bid result coming in. So, yeah. um, I, I I I would feel that if if on bid day you're you're kind of uncomfortable with things and you need to uh, make a decision, then you know, that's going to be it first and foremost, because it's going to be a big ticket. So then you go after a little smaller stuff. My opinion. Thanks. Yep. All right, I can jump on into the basement upgrades. Um, uh, there's a lot of mechanical and electrical upgrades uh, down there as um, some of the units are, are non-functioning um, and there is not many lights down there at all. Um, we're demoing some of the existing walls to open up the, the space to be a larger overall room for the kids. Um, we're opening up some interior uh, windows. Uh, there's some... Uh, basically a masonry uh, infilled windows that were uh, reopening. Um, we're putting in a new uh, game room uh, with built-in screens and uh, consoles. There's a new clubhouse with some, uh, some built-in seating um, and nook and storage areas. Um, uh, I mentioned the new lighting. And again, um, we're reusing as much existing furniture as, as possible and um, adding new as, as necessary. Um, so I'll just bring up the furniture plan so you can see that a bit more. Um, these are the windows that are opening up into the, the existing windows we're reopening uh, to allow the, the light from the exterior to come through into this space. Um, we have the two mechanical and storage rooms over here. And the large okay. center space is what we're calling the clubhouse. The room to the yeah. left is homework area. The room in the upper left corner is the game area and the game nook. So the screens and uh, equipment that they have yep. for playing uh, will exist up in there. Yep. Uh, and that's all fed off the uh, circulation corridor, elevator, and stairs. Looks mm -hmm. great. You want to just show the second floor real quick, school department? Yeah. Um, right. Yeah. Oh, so I guess for the first floor, uh, we're going to use the, the open lobby space as a uh, somewhat meeting area, if impromptu meetings, if necessary, and uh, uh, seating, have some lounge seating in there as well. Uh, you can see some training tables in these two rooms so that they can be reconfigured and used as needed. Um, and then on the second floor, it is mostly their offices. Um, this is the secure filing uh, over here. Um, the reception area and then the solar the solar tubes we're proposing are, are in this uh, lobby area. Um, and then their, their kitchenette. Nice. I'll add quickly as well, as you can see on these plans, there is a uh, there is a furniture element to this that's going to be run through the owner. That's not going to be part of the general contractor's bid. Mm -hmm. So that's something that LLB has been contracted with for the interior designing of which we'll be working with them for, for, for working with furniture vendors, whether going out for separate pricing, working off of the state bid list um, in order to get the the results and the best price that we need for what the furniture package is going to be. I know Jessica has also had a number of meetings with both departments about any type of uh, filing or storage or desks that can be um, moved over from the current place if they're in good condition or if they want to keep them. Uh, so we're itemizing that and we'll be putting that out to bid um, for inclusion into the ask at town meeting. Yeah, I'm sure Steve Mark wants to keep his desk. 
Uh, could, I, could I ask a question? Yeah. Um, yeah, I just was, uh, I'm wondering um, in the, in the, the where, where they're proposing a, a basketball court with the stage, um, how difficult is it going to be to switch from one use to the other? If there, if there's games in there during the day, how, how much work would it be to have a, you know, a school theater or a musical or some other event in there at night? So the games that are on the stage um, are, are going to be a uh, built-in projector that will be installed on the the trusses. Um, so there's there's nothing really on uh, on the floor itself. Mm -hmm. And then we're proposing mobile um, basketball uh, hoops. Um, but depending on how how we want to protect the space, um, whether that be you know, hockey nets or or some sort of system so that we're we're protecting the the walls and the balcony. Um, I guess I would I would defer to Alicia. I think she's on this call as to how much stuff they plan to have in the theater and how much would be stored or left out. My opinion, this is Brian with LLP, is that there just needs to be a memorandum of understanding written between the departments and, um, you know, on uses and storage and things like that, okay. so that it's it's pretty clear <clears throat> okay. operationally. All right, thank you. Yeah. Okay, any more uh, questions or comments on the uh, Indian Hill or 36 King? Not yet. My only, my only other thing, Steve. Sorry to, sorry to jump in. Is um, looking at the calendar now. The next PMBC meeting is going to be on the thirteenth of March. Yep. Um, so that puts us. Uh, we'll be having a, a pre bid conference the following day for any prospective general contractors or any filed sub bids that want to walk the site. Um, but that also will be coming up uh, quickly on our last day for addendum. So uh, we will, will bring. Uh, you, everybody on on the call here will be in in possession of the bid documents, um, but then we will also be kind of asking or or bringing to the table if there are any changes or any conversations that have been having up to that point about anything that needs to be implemented into the design. Okay, so that's another um, issue about having a quorum. If we don't have a quorum, we need to, and I know that there is some kind of a provision in mass general law that allows for and i'll i'll have to get with diane on this <clears throat> so um i'll get back to you on that in the event that we don't have a quorum it looks like two people have their hand raised but are muted I can't see. I just... yeah, it's uh, it's Brian Tarbox and Mark Rombacher. Hi. Go ahead, Brian. Okay. Yeah. Um. And just FYI, um, uh, finance committee, but obviously not speaking for them. But um, when, right. uh... when might the finance committee um get a, a look at the the bids or the total number? Because we have to, you know. We have to have some input on that, that as we go to town meeting, especially since last time we got it at the very last minute and ended up voting against. So just looking for a day um, when we might get a number. Yep. yep. So you can um you can see that on, on the schedule in front of you that the date of 4324 is the anticipated date that the GC bids would be due. So that bait that that bid package would be inclusive of the filed sub bidders that they chose to go with. And so that would be the low apparent bidder. We obviously want to do our due diligence and do our DCAM evaluations and make sure that they're responsible as well, uh, along with the authority, awarding authority. But Brian Forrest, I believe you have a total project budget, which is um, pretty close to where it needs to be, minus this bid number. And so that may be able to be shared now, knowing that that bid number is going to fluctuate within a certain delta and, and maybe um, uh, from 
the date that the bid is actually in, that'll get solidified and you'll have that duration uh, with the actual number in it. That, that's correct. And, and Brian, what my hope is that in the next few weeks, we start really defining and, and refining our total project budget so that when that is, when that bid is in hand, we're, we're ready to share that with, with everyone ahead of the town meeting. And, and I, I do understand that this is also, uh, it's a very tight turnaround. Um, and we tried to do this and get the design as quickly as possible, such that it gave the town as much time as possible prior to town meeting. So the hope is that we can get in front of some committees um, after the fourth with a with a firm number, which will have furniture, soft costs, contingencies, and construction costs all put in together for review by all the committees. Okay, that's great. I really I really appreciate it, and we appreciate all the work y'all are doing under the very tight timeline. If you do have any sort of ballparking number, which I think you said would certainly that would be great to get. Sure. Sure. And and what I'll what I'll do is what I've been working off was the original, if if you remember the first time that we met with the finance committee, which was like you said, very last minute. Um, I've been using that as as kind of a live document. And if you maybe give me a a week or so to kind of put some some up to date figures in there, um, I can share that and provide that with everybody. That would be outstanding. Thank you so much. Really Thank you. so so uh, Brian Fours, I think we need to uh Send that all through uh, Brian Ferreira, uh, Ryan Ferreira. Correct. And he can distribute it to um, the other town departments. Correct. Yep. Um, Mark Rombacher. Yeah. So I had a, a question on the uh, performing arts space. If it's going to be used as like a gym, are we doing anything to protect those windows? Is that part of the plan? There's a lot of windows in that space. It'd be a shame to see a basketball go through them immediately. <laughs> yeah, as as uh, Jessica mentioned, we're uh, we're anticipating provisions in there to to protect it to the best of our ability. We don't want to take away from the space and cage it necessarily, but uh, filming okay. options on the glass uh, would help okay. mitigate that. I wasn't sure if you were protecting the floor or the what what you were protecting when you said that. So that was the question. So okay, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, Steve Mark. Um, yeah, I, I think the windows in that space um, already have some kind of a pr protective covering over them already. Um, Alicia probably can chime in on that as well, but I think those windows are already protected in its current configuration. Okay. So, Alicia? There's that, sorry about that. Uh, there's actually not very many windows at all. On the um, internal wall, there are none. Uh, and then on the out uh, exterior wall, they're up really high and they're smaller. So I know with all the curtains, it looks like there's giant windows there, but there's really not. Well, we would want to add any film safety wise to that just to just to add, give it a little bit of uh, extra protection. Yep. Any other questions, comments? Mark, your hand is still up. I don't know if you have another question. Ah, okay. Um, I, I, if you don't mind, I have one more question, I think, and I can probably deal with Brian Fors on this. Um, are we, in, uh, are you guys including some of those soft costs for movers and file, you know, to, to move the files over and the current furniture over and things like that? That's correct. Okay. Thank Steve, you. Steve, you can't you can't have a bigger office, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'll take over my 1945 desk, all right? <laughs> <laughs> we've we've been uh working with uh Jessica um and, and her team about what furniture we can take over from our office. So uh we're trying to recycle as much furniture as we can. Uh, I'm also working with our phone company um, provider contractor um, to get a quote to move the current phone system that we have in our offices now over to the new offices. Um, I have a meeting with them next week um, and I'll get that number over to uh, Brian Forrest as fast as I can. 
Yeah, that'll be real helpful because right now I all I have are placeholders for phones and, and AV, things like that, that we want to make sure we have accounted for so we're not taking anything out of contingency. So yep. a, an accurate number helps out yep. a lot. Yep. No, we appreciate everything you're doing, Brian and Jessica and um, Brian Valentine as well. Thank you. That's interesting, Steve, Mark. Uh, you know, we, we, we moved into a new office, I'd say, about a year ago, and we have absolutely no desk phones whatsoever. Well, it's all cell phones. Yeah, that's my office too. Wow. So I, uh, you, you might want to rethink that landline stuff because it's a, it's a cost. Um, actually, it's not a, it's not a huge cost. So. Okay, just throwing that out. Yeah, we already had the system. It's a matter of moving it over, and, um, you know, we might have to add a new switch or a, a new server or something, but. Um, it, it should be relatively painless. Well, we'll see. So, you know, uh, your 1945 phone with your 1945 desk. <laughs> yeah. Rotary <laughs> dial still. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anything else on um, Indian Hill? Oh, we, we, I, Brian Force, I don't know if this is appropriate for them to vote on or if it needs to happen for us to post tomorrow i just want to make sure that we have no that, that's up. the plan unless there's any um unless there's any blowback or, or or uh or feedback on it that that is our proposed schedule we'll be we'll be back with you guys at the next meeting uh in march um with a with an updated schedule hopefully all the same dates are are still the same um and, and any questions that we've received from from any contractors and any feedback that we've done in the interim so that is our plan right now I make a motion that we go on with the proposed schedule. Is there a second? Second. Okay, roll call vote, uh, Bob. Bob Rama, yes. Mike. Mike Scaduno, yes. Uh, Bartlett. Bartlett, yes. And Steve, yes. Motion carries. Ready, set, go. Moving on to member input, uh, Bob. I'm all set, thank you. Uh, Bartlett. I'm all set. Thanks, uh, Mike. I'm good. Thanks. And I'm okay. So, is there Thank a motion to adjourn? Showed up. Thank you. So moved. Second. Oh, all in favor? Bob. Bob Romley, yes. Bartlett. Bartlett, yes. Mike. Mike Scaduno, yes. And Steve, yes. And thank you very much. The next meeting is March 13th at seven o'clock, and we'll see you then. Thanks for your participation. Thank Thanks you. to everybody Thank that you. came in tonight. Thank you. Good night.